While decades of solar system exploration has answered many of humanity's questions about the nature and formation of this star system, with in-depth study comes even more mysteries and odd possibilities. Some of them are intriguing and strange, some of them are outright unsettling. So here are 10 of the most unsettling solar system possibilities. Number 10. The solar system can, and probably has, ejected planets. Long ago in prehistory, humans noticed that certain objects among the stars in the sky moved, so strangely in fact that these objects, the planets, still bear ancient names of gods and goddesses. Today, we can very accurately predict the orbits of the planets as they move in a kind of clockwork precision as they do their gravitational dance with the sun. This was not always so. Early in the history of the solar system, gravitational chaos reigned as opposed to the clockwork-like precision. Planets like Jupiter migrated, creating the chaos. But during this period of instability, it's possible that planets within our solar system were ejected entirely from it. One potential indicator for this is the lack of a certain type of planet that seems very common everywhere else in the galaxy, but not here. These are the so-called super-Earths, planets significantly more massive than our world, but not as big as Uranus or Neptune, and our solar system seems rather odd for not having one. It's possible that it once did, and our solar system's super-Earth was ejected early in the history of the solar system. That said, as the solar system ages, chaos will come again. While the fate of Earth and Venus are likely to involve getting engulfed by the Sun rather than ejected, there is a chance, though it's thought to be quite low, that in the far future the planet Mercury will be ejected from the solar system as it goes through further changes as it ages. Number 9. Planets can, and do, go horribly wrong. While the solar system itself changes over long periods of time, the individual planets do as well. While some aspects of them change every day, they also change long term, and a planet can start out one way and then end up presenting completely different conditions over time. Three of the inner planets in our solar system have done this, Earth, Mars, and Venus. They all started out looking somewhat similar, possibly all three having had liquid water on their surfaces at one point. But over time, these worlds were subject to circumstances that changed them dramatically. In the case of Venus, it was a runaway greenhouse effect due ultimately to being located just a bit too close to the sun. As Venus's liquid water evaporated, the insulating effect of water vapor retained heat, warming that planet up. Further still, as this transformation occurred, it led to the formation of the thick carbon dioxide atmosphere and the extremely hot temperatures we see today on that world. For Mars, it was a different effect. It simply couldn't hold on to its atmosphere, losing it to the solar wind and radiation, dropping its temperatures below those needed for surface liquid water. With Earth, it was life that changed it. Earth has seen several different phases of atmospheric composition, but the defining event in the creation of the oxygen-rich atmosphere we know today was the evolution of photosynthesizing plants. Number 8. There very well could be undiscovered planets. The outer solar system presents a growing mystery. The motion of a growing number of objects in the outer solar system appears to have been affected by something much larger than a typical Kuiper Belt object. Rather, it suggests the existence of a very large, unseen ninth planet lurking in the outer solar system, likely very distant from the Sun, but still in orbit of it. If this planet exists, it's likely to be discovered sometime in the next few years through one of several different sky surveys, and in particular, the Large Synoptic Survey Telescope, which when it comes online is specifically designed to pick up moving objects, such as Planet 9. The existence of this planet might also solve the solar system's missing super-Earth conundrum, if it existed. That it wasn't ejected completely, rather just thrown out into the outer solar system. Or it may be the case that Planet 9 isn't originally from this solar system at all, and was captured by the Sun at some point. In which case, a truly alien world might await us to explore far out in the outer solar system. And if one unknown planet isn't enough, some evidence exists that there may be more than one, and a tenth planet may also lurk distantly from the Sun. Number 7. The Sun is growing brighter. The Sun is by far not a static object. Over short and long periods of time, it changes. One of those changes, luminosity, 
will result in a brighter sun that will bake the Earth far earlier than during the sun's great change into a red giant billions of years from now. The initial problem with this won't simply be hotter temperatures, rather its effects on Earth's geology, which will cause a decrease in carbon dioxide levels roughly 600 million years from now. These levels will fall below what some plants like trees can handle with photosynthesis, but other plants will persist longer. Eventually, however, all plant life on Earth will be overwhelmed, and with it, all animal life. By about one billion years from now, the oceans will evaporate, causing a runaway greenhouse effect. That, over time, will cause the temperatures to continue to rise and destroy any remaining microbial life on this world. Providing we don't do anything about it in the far future, eventually Earth will someday have no life at all. Number 6. Total Solar Eclipses To understand just how unsettling this particular phenomenon is, you need to experience eclipse totality, where the sun is entirely blocked by the moon passing in front of it. Seeing a partial or annular eclipse does not do this justice, nor does photography, and having seen totality during an eclipse myself, I instantly realized why ancient peoples often found these a bit disturbing. But mostly, they didn't really understand what was causing them. Now we do, it's the moon occasionally passing in front of the sun. The thing is, it really shouldn't do that, at least the way it does it. By total chance, the apparent size of the moon as we see it happens to be almost exactly the same size as the sun as we see it, allowing for a total solar eclipse so precise that we can observe the sun's corona in its full glory from the surface of the Earth. This is a bit weird. It does happen one other place in the solar system. Jupiter's moon Callisto has that effect of Jupiter. But this phenomena on a habitable world in the universe doesn't seem like it would be very common and there's no reason why it happens to be that way. It just is, and just happens to occur this way at the exact time that there's a civilization around to see it. But if the galaxy is full of alien civilizations, it may be that our planet ends up as a tourist destination for extraterrestrial eclipse viewers, at least for a time anyway. About 600 million years from now, Earth will experience its last one. After that, the moon will have drifted far enough away that it will no longer completely block out the sun. Number 5. The Solar System is Not Isolated It's been said that we live in a cosmic shooting gallery. Comets from the outer solar system regularly pass by, and so do asteroids. And in the past, those objects have hit Earth, and will again unless we deflect them. This used to be far worse, to the point of bombardment in the early solar system but it's calmed down as the solar system has settled down. But with the recent confirmation of the first interstellar object we've ever observed, Oumuamua, it's driven home that we're not just under bombardment from objects originating within our solar system, but also objects originating from the rest of the galaxy. And this will never stop. Flotsam and various rocks probably pass through this star system constantly, and will for as long as Earth exists. But that's not the only thing that can pass through. Biology is part of our universe as well, and, whether common or rare, our planet proves this. Our planet also proves that intelligent life is possible in the universe, again, rare or not. If other intelligent life exists in the Milky Way, and is reasonably close, there has been enough time since the formation of the galaxy for other civilizations to have plausibly arisen and become highly advanced. Given the immensity of geologic time, such a civilization might have existed in this galaxy for a very long time, billions of years potentially, and even at sublight speeds, they could have had plenty of time to send a probe here. We've never seen anything that unequivocally says that they have, but it is possible that this solar system has been visited. Number 4. The Sun Can At Any Time Disrupt Civilization while long term, the sun will eventually destroy the earth, first by baking its surface and then eventually engulfing it as the sun becomes a red giant, but the sun also presents a short term threat, that of a coronal mass ejection. While coronal mass ejections are nothing new, earth has been bathed in them many times over its history and life itself weathers them just fine, human technology is new and is highly vulnerable to such storms. In 1859, for example, Earth was lined up in the sights of just such a solar storm, and it resulted in massive auroras and disruptions to the telegraph system that was in place at the time. If, or perhaps when, 
this happens again, it would cause widespread damage to our technology to the tune of trillions of dollars. In 2012, a coronal mass ejection the size of the 1859 storm occurred, but luckily missed Earth. One of these days, we won't be so lucky. Number three, there could very well be undiscovered star systems nearby. We tend to think of our nearby stellar neighborhood as known territory, where Proxima Centauri is the closest star, followed by the other members of the Alpha Centauri system. But in reality, there is a mystery about the density of the local group of stars. As far as dwarf stars go, this density is lower than expected, leading astronomers to suspect that there are perhaps many undiscovered stars within 20 light years of Earth. This is not as surprising as it may seem. Red dwarfs just above the limit from a brown dwarf emit most of their radiation in the infrared and are quite dim in visible light. Yet, red dwarfs are the most common type of star in the galaxy. It's entirely possible that we simply haven't noticed all of the nearby ones yet. And in fact, a red dwarf known as Teegarten star was only discovered in 2003, despite being only 12 light years from Earth. Close stars can be a problem. The star Gliese 710 is expected to pass by the solar system in a bit over a million years, and possibly pass close enough to us to disturb the Oort cloud, and potentially send a hail of comets into the inner solar system that could pose a threat to Earth. We know about that star, but there may be others that could pass by that we currently have no idea exist. Number 2. Venus's Odd Clouds and the Possibility of Extreme Life Perhaps the greatest mystery of the planet Venus is not on its surface. That is a high-pressure, high-heat, hellish wasteland, but instead, its atmosphere. Within the upper reaches of Venus's atmosphere is the most Earth-like place in the solar system, even above the environments of Mars. This zone has cooler temperatures and pressures, comparable to Earth. And while that atmosphere is unbreathable, it's actually easily survivable for a human who might experience a tear in their spacesuit if they were in those conditions. Given that this clement zone exists, and that Venus in the past was much more Earth-like than it is now, and in fact may once have had liquid water, it's possible that life might have arose there long ago. If Venus's transition to a hell planet was slow, that life might have adapted to survive in this clement zone in the atmosphere providing that it adapted to the high sulfuric acid environment and evolved some way to protect itself from increased ultraviolet radiation. Or, it may use that ultraviolet light as an energy source. That would explain another of Venus's mysteries. Unexplained dark areas appear in ultraviolet images of Venus's cloud tops. UV-absorbing microbial life might provide an explanation. Number 1. Did life originate on an asteroid? There are many questions about the origins of life on Earth, and how it might relate to the solar system at large. There is the possibility that simple life on Earth did not originate here. Rather, it might have originally arose on Mars and was transported here via panspermia. But Mars isn't the only option. It's possible that it might not have originated on either a planet or a moon. Instead, it may have arisen on the asteroid Ceres, though it's really more of a dwarf planet. This asteroid seems to have the right mix for life, and may have once, or still does, harbor a subsurface liquid ocean. Also, organics have been detected, raising the possibility for life on this asteroid. But there's more. Early in Earth's history, during the late heavy bombardment, life on Earth was unlikely due to the pummeling this planet was taking at the time. But there is evidence that Ceres somehow avoided impacts during this period in that the water mantle present on the asteroid would have been blown off, as is the case with other asteroids in the solar system, and it wouldn't have had the gravity to recapture it. This is particularly interesting because while it's possible for rocks to be blasted off Venus or Mars to land on Earth, and conceivably carry live microbes with it, the lower gravity of Ceres should allow for materials to be blasted off during small impacts much more straightforwardly presumably making panspermia from this object easier. Unfortunately, no evidence for this exists. It's merely speculation. And in fact, no meteorite has ever been found that can be identified as being from Ceres. But it's an interesting thought that Earth may not technically be our home world, and that the origins of life on Earth might have begun at the minor planet Ceres. 
Thanks for listening. I am futurist and science fiction author John Michael Godier, and be sure to check out my books at your favorite online book retailer and subscribe to my channels for regular, in-depth explorations into the interesting, weird, and unknown aspects of this amazing universe in which we live.